Good day grade 10s, welcome to this lesson on statistics. In this lesson we're going to be talking about measures of dispersion. Before we've been talking about measures of central tendency, in other words, we're trying to find the middle of the data. Here we're trying to find out how the data is spread. So let's talk about that. So let's say for example we have a bunch of data. For example, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 4, 5, 6, and 9. The range of data in the set is the difference between the maximum number and the minimum number. So the range is the difference between the max and min. So quartiles divide the data into quarters. So let's look at an example. And you'll notice that we've taken this data and we've divided, we've already arranged it in numerical order because no matter what your data is you always have to rearrange it in numerical order. So we've got 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9 and you will notice that our range is 2, 2, 9. Right, so now the median which is also called Q2 is the middle number. So let's have a look at how many numbers we've got here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So that makes life very easy. The median is the middle number, which is 5, which is also called Q2. The midpoint of the lower half, okay, is called Q1, or it's the first quartile. So the first quartile, Q1, is the midpoint of the lower half, which is going to be 3. Okay, that makes sense. We've got 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the midpoint of that is going to be 3. So that is the lower quartile is 3. The midpoint of the upper is going to be 1, 2, 3. It's going to be 7. And that is called Q3 or the upper quartile. So we have got the median, which is Q2, the midpoint of the lower half, which is Q3, the upper quartile, which is Q7. Okay, so let's look at an example now. So we've got 20, 32, 43, 55, 56, and we just check at it generally. And we see, oh, look, it's in numerical order. Isn't that nice of them? So the first thing we do is count the number of numbers we have. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Ah, so this one's a little bit different because there isn't just one mid number. So what we actually have to do is we need to take the two middle numbers and then add them and divide them by two. So let's have a look. So we've got 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and back again. We find that 61 and 73 are the two middle numbers. So what we do is we go 61 plus 73 divided by 2 which becomes as a 4 and 6 and 7 is 13 over 2 which is going to be 67. So that there is Q2 which is also known as the median. Right, now let's look at Q1. Now if you look at Q1 you can see that the middle number of the bottom 5 numbers is 43 that makes life very easy and if we look at this we can see that the middle of these two is 10 I mean is the tenth number which is 90 okay so now we have Q2 Q1 and Q3 now the interquartile range is known as Q3 minus Q1 and this is actually a better measure of dispersion than the range and the reason bec is because of the outliers. Remember that in the previous video they spoke about numbers like for example you had 3, 3, 3, 3 and then 100. This is considered an outlier. So if we had to include that number in our dispersion suddenly our range of our numbers would be 3 to a hundred which is a bit weird when most of our data was three so whereas the interquartile range is a measure of the first quartile the first quarter subtracted from the third quarter and that gives us a better measure of how the data is spread so let's look at another example again so we've got two two three four five five six seven seven eight nine and we want q2 so we always get q2 first so again i'm going to count one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So it makes life very easy because that means that five is my Q2. So that's five. My Q1 is the lower half. It's the, basically it's the median of the lower half, 
which is going to be 3. And then we've got Q3, which is the median of the upper half, which is the middle term, which then is the 7. So my interquartile range is going to be Q3 minus Q1, which in this case is going to be 7 minus 3, which equals 4, which means the data spread between Q3 and Q1 in this case is 4. Right. Now, there's a thing called a five number summary. So you guys need to know what the five number summary is. And we've actually been doing it all along. We just haven't labeled it. And what is the five number summary? First of all, we have the minimum number, which is the number that's the smallest number in the data set. Then we have the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum value. So we've actually already spoken about all this. We've spoken about the range, which is basically the maximum value minus the minimum value and then we've done a couple of examples where we've worked out what Q1 was, Q2 was and Q3 was and we can represent these with a thing called the box and whisker diagram and we're going to now watch a little video where they discuss the box and whisker diagram with us and I just need to change this back to an arrow and let's go. An ecologist surveys the age of about a hundred trees in a local forest. He uses a box and whisker plot to map his data, shown below. What is the range of tree ages that he surveyed? What is the median age of a tree in the forest? So first of all, let's just let's make sure we understand what this box and whiskers plot is even about. This is really a way of seeing the spread of all of the different data points, which are the age of the trees, and to also give other information, like what is the median and where does most of where do most of the ages of the tree sit. So this whisker part, so you can see this black part is a whisker, this is the box, and then this is another whisker right over here. The whiskers tell us essentially the spread of all of the data. So it says the lowest data point in this sample is an eight-year-old tree. I'm assuming that this, this axis down here is in years. And it says that the highest, the oldest tree right over here is 50 years. So if we want the range, and when we think of range in the statistics point of view, we're thinking of the highest data point minus the lowest data point. So it's going to be 50 minus 8. So we have a range of 42. So that's what the whiskers tell us. It tells us that everything falls between 8 and 50 years, including 8 years and 50 years. Now what the box does, the box starts at, well let me think, explain it to you this way. The mid, this line right over here, this is the median. This right over here is the median. And so half of the ages are going to be less than this median. We see right over here the median is 21. So this box and whiskers plot tells us that half of the ages of the trees are less than 21, and half are older than 21. And then these endpoints right over here, these are the medians for each of those sections. So this is the median for all of the trees that are less than the real median, or less than the main median. So this is the, the middle of all all of the ages of trees that are less than 21, this is the middle age for all of the trees that are greater than 21 or older than 21. And so these essentially are splitting, we're actually splitting all of the data into four groups. This we would call the first quartile, so I'll call it Q1 for a first quartile, I'll, maybe I'll do 1Q. This is the first quartile. Uh, roughly a, a fourth of the trees, because the way you calculate it, sometimes a tree ends up in one point or another. About a fourth of the trees end up here. A fourth of the trees are between 14 and 21. A fourth are between 21 and it looks like 33. And then a fourth are in this quartile. So we call this the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile, and the fourth quartile. So to answer the question, we already did the range. There's a 42-year spread between the oldest and the youngest tree. And then the median age of a tree in the forest is at 21. So even though you might have trees that are as old as 50, the median of the forest is actually closer to the lower end of our entire, our entire spectrum of all of the ages. So the, the, if you view median as your central tendency measurement, it's only at 21 years. And you can even see it. It's closer to the left of the box and closer to the left, the, the end of the left whisker than the end of the right whisker. Right, so basically what he's done is he's shown us what we would see when we have a box and whisker. But you also need to know how to draw this. So the most important thing when knowing how to draw this is you have to draw a line with proper standard measurements. So obviously I don't have that, 
but I have a line and what you need to do is you actually have to measure along this line the units okay you can't just go okay so let me give you an example if for example we've got a minimum at 10 Q1 is at 14 Q2 which is our median is at 16 Q3 is at 18 and let's say our maximum just for fun is 20 so that's not really a spread I mean it's just really going up okay if I just had to draw that and I went well I think it looks kind of like that that is not very accurate you don't want that at all you actually need to take a ruler and you need to draw little lines that go okay fine this is 10 1 2 3 that is 14 1 2 that is 16 1 2 that is 18 1 2 and that is 20 and admittedly I'm not using a ruler I don't have a ruler so I'm not measuring these out very accurately right so then the whisker the beginning of the whisker forms your minimum so that there is your minimum then the first quartile okay first quartile forms the forms the first line of your box your 16 is your median which is the halfway which is your median of your box your 18 is your upper quartile and then again you are using a ruler to draw this I apologize that I'm not and then finally you measure your maximum point over here and that is your upper whisker and that's actually what we do when we're using our five number summary here is our five number summary and often they'll say calculate the five number summary and then draw a box and whisker diagram to represent the data and if you're not using a ruler with measured out units you will not get an accurate representation of the data and it doesn't seem that important right now but later on you're going to get to have to translate what this data is telling you and if you're drawing it incorrectly you won't actually be able to translate the data so please grade 10 learn how to do your five number summary and how to draw your box and whisker diagram accurately and then go do lots of examples and then the assessment at the end of the section. Have a wonderful day.